Yeah, I've done a lot of things. I've played the Super Bowl, did the World Cup, did a lot of things. Been to Rome, Italy, Brazil. I've been a lot of places. But spending time with those kids building robots just ignited my whole life. That was Will I Am earlier this year, and he's back with me now, along with Dean Kamen, who invented uh, this whole project involving kids and robots. I mean, Will, you're basically, you're a big kid, aren't you? You love these things. You love robots. I, I, I just like seeing, a kid, seeing kids inspired. Would you like them yourself? Uh, I, I had a good time uh, building this with the kids. I mean, this one, look, this, this sort of, what is it? This, I'm, I'm led to believe this is basically you. This is the show-off entertainer, but it doesn't do no, very no, much, no. right? Like, this robot, you know all the, you know that robot dance people do? Yeah. This could do the robot dance better than the people do the robot dance. <laughs> and did one of the kids built this, or a team a of kids? A big kid built that. Huh? And a team of kids built this guy. So this, tell me about this one. This is the real, the, the real brains one, right? Correct. Dave, far away. That's built from a kit called the first tech challenge kit. As I said, we have different levels of competition and our middle level between the first Lego league for the elementary school mm -hmm. and the first robotics, which is the high school competition, mm -hmm. sort of the Super Bowl. This sits in the middle and it's called first tech challenge. And uh, once we found out that Will was going to come to uh, our finals in the 70,000 seat dome in St. Louis and do a halftime show for us on Friday night, we said, well, sometime Friday before the show and before the championship Saturday morning, we should get Will to build one of the robots and go out there and compete with the kids. Little did I know that he was going to compete with me <laughs> and he won. Yeah. Really? It was humiliating. You have these kids that are 10, 11, 12, 13. These are the, that's the age of the kids I built this robot with. Well, actually, they built it, and they let me screw in a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> and take all the credit. No, I, I, I'm not taking <laughs> I'm credit. Kidding, I'm, I'm giving it credit where credit is due. Yeah. And uh, they just amaze me, right? These kids. Hold on, well, wait, wait, well, I am. I have to finish writing this code. There's a bug in it. I can't do that. They, they showed me that there's this whole new world that... Dang, I wish I was doing that when I was 13. I wish that was there. What kind of powers does this robot have? It's not fully functional right now, but what, what can it do when it's going? Well, the goal of the robot, every year we give the kids a different challenge. We raise the bar each year. And the playing field for those robots had four of them on the field simultaneously, and they have to go over ramps and pick up sticks and turn them and put them in little goals and pull the goals Are they, they remote-controlled? Are they computerized? How does it work? They're remote-controlled, and they also can autonomously run. They do both. The kids learn software, and they learn electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and sensors. Mostly, they learn how to deal with complex problems, and what they really learn is how accessible and fun it is to learn science and engineering and math. And they, they learn self-confidence. They learn to have serious relationships with serious adults and serious ideas about the real world. And well, let's go back again to, to East Los Angeles when you were a kid, because you never knew your father. Your mother had three kids and adopted four others. And there was never much money around and stuff. When you look back to that time, what was your inspiration, other than the science that we've discussed? What was the motivation to you? What do you think got you out? Encouragement. From who? Um, my family. <clears throat> um, family friends. My teachers. Mr. Wright. Ms. Montez. You can remember them? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Wright was... That guy really changed my life. He told me... Because uh, I had ADD. Um, still do just figured out how to use it for my benefit um so i don't think my mom she couldn't afford the medicine ritalin which is great i'm glad she couldn't so mr wright said hey well the way you're going to get through school is just ask questions ask questions to your teachers and you're going to get through school so that advice i became like every teacher's friend and that's why to this day me and miss montez are close when you see these gang kids is a big part of the problem the fact they don't have anybody? No, but they do have somebody. But that's a misconception because they found it in that community. Right? But if there was other things for them to get involved with, they wouldn't have that as the only option. I know people in gangs. I could have went down that route. But music in that community saved my life. The teachers, you know, the reach out that Miss Montez said, hey, well, don't go writing on the walls. 
she asked me, she's like, why are you writing on the walls in school? You know, because I've been practicing my, my script and I want people to see it. She was like, hey, don't damage the property. I promise you always come in my classroom and write on the chalkboard and I won't take it down. Right? That little deed changed my life. So I would go hang out in her classroom and I'll get a draw on her chalkboard. And all the other kids were like, yo, I like that art piece of art that you did in Miss Monte's room. Can you achieve this kind of thing without the driving force of a mother or a father, somebody who's with you to be able to provide a, a chance to do it? Well, it depends on the people around you. Sometimes your friends, good friends, replace that. Of course, you're going to, you know what I mean? I can't speak for those people. I'm speaking for me being raised by a single mom and uncles and friends that pitched in. And, uh, but yes, there's, there's always ways out of it, you know. Your mother must be pretty proud of you. Yeah, I'm proud of her. Yeah, but she must be really proud of you. I mean, yeah. to see what you've made of yourself. She rewarding was, all she, the sacrifice she made. She was really happy to, uh, to go to um, the, uh, the uh, robotics competition in St. Louis. She was happy to give out those scholarships to the kids, um, to, to feel like she was a part of something. And I'm happy, I'm proud of my mom and the, you know, the difficult decisions. Sometimes it takes difficult decisions to do things, to leap. You just gotta leap, especially if you know it's better than just sitting there and bickering and fighting and, right, and waiting for people to make it happen for you. you just have well, it's to funny you should say that, because when we come back after this break, I wanna talk to you about the bickering and fighting in Washington, the debt crisis, America, the economy, because it strikes me you two, probably between you, may have a few answers.